this is a, a cyclical event via it occurs in the reproductive system. It is made up of two main cycles, the ovarian cycle and the menstrual or the of a endometrial cycle. So you have a reproductive cycle now. It is hormones when they control the cycles. These hormones are the gonadotropin releasing hormones, the uh, follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, estrogen and progesterone. Let's look at the function of the reproductive cycle. The function of this reproductive cycle, the main reason why our reproductive system goes through these cycles is that it's preparing an oocyte an, or an egg for fertilization. An oocyte or an egg for fertilization. And it's also preparing the uterus, the endometrium of the uterus, to receive the fertilized egg in case fertilization occurs and also provide nourishment for it. This is the main reason why Emma yeah, reproductive systems you know, it go, it go through the cycles. The first menstruation is called menarche, and the average age for menstruation is 12 years. But 8 to 16 years is normal. Although 8 to 16 years is normal, the average is 12. Some can have it earlier than that. And some can also have it later. So the, the range is 8 to 16 years. Home, during menarche, before menarche, in the early development of a young girl, the, these hormones are not active. They are not working. They are low level of follicle stimulating hormone, gonadotropic hormones, and the luteinizing hormone. So when you are approaching menarche, the level of gonadotropin hormone goes high. There is high release of gonadotropin hormone by the hypothalamus. And this uh, stimulates the anterior pituitary glands. So the glands will produce the follicle stimulating hormone. So let's look at our body. It will, it will help us understand the illustration. The ovarian cycle is made up of three main phases. You, we have the first phase, which is the first 14 days, which is the follicular phase. And the next 14 days after ovulation, which is the lithia phase. And the 14th day, which is the ovulation. So the ovarian cycle has three main phases. The follicular phase, the ovulation, and the lithia phase. The endometrial cycle also has three main phases. The menstruation, the proliferation, and the secretion. And this, both these phases, Okay, simultaneously. Phase is two way in an It occurs together. And yes, the ovary no air performing it and then the uterus or the endometrium is waiting for the ovaries to finish. No. As the ovary no, is preparing an egg, in it, the endometrium is also preparing itself. The endometrium of the uterus is also preparing itself to receive the egg in case fertilization occurs. So when can, will you see that this is the first day of my menses? We are saying it's a cycle, and any cycle, you know, it is a, a cyclical order. So the beginning of the of one cycle is the end of the other. But idea, Epia Bontima, we can really observe is menstruation. So menses is your first day of your menstrual cycle. The normal menstrual uh, menstruation day, averagely, is three to five days. So three to five days. But some it can be seven to seven days, two to seven days, sorry, two to seven days, which is also normal. But we are now considering the 28 days normal cycle, a normal 28 day cycle. In a normal 28 day cycle, it starts from day one of your menstrual cycle. So the first day you will see blood, you count one. If you want to know your, menstrual, your cycle very well, you should study yourself for at least six months. Study your cycle for at least six months. You will know that I have 28 day cycle, 29, 30, or 31. Then you take the first day of your menstrual cycle, of your menstruation, as your day one. When you menstruate for the first 
to the fifth day, in normal 28 day cycle, the bleeding will cease. Means the endometrium has finished shedding off. So when the uh, uh, menstruation fee ceases, then a new cycle has also begun. The endometrium will start to prepare itself again. The best that is said, it's also preparing itself again. An egg will also start to form under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone. Anytime you hear follicle stimulate, it stimulates follicle. Which follicle? The egg. In normal saying, your friend, egg, egg. That is the follicle stimulating hormone. That is what it is doing. And by the after bleeding from the fifth day to the twelfth day, a new egg is developing. The endometrium is also preparing. And by the twelfth day, then the egg is fully matured to a state called the graphene follicle. By the two of them, the name grape follicle, I have fully matured and it is ready to be ovulated or ready to release. What causes the release of the grape follicle? The release of the grape follicle, as a grape follicle now mature, we are, it releases an estrogen. And this estrogen will go high. When estrogen goes high, it will stimulate the pituitary gland to release luteinizing hormone. And this luteinizing hormone, by the 14th day, in any 28-day cycle, there is a very high level of luteinizing hormone. And the oocyte will be released into the uh, inverted end of the fallopian tube. And it will start to travel or move from the fallopian tube into the uterine cavity. So immediately you release an egg at the 14th day, you move to the second phase of the menstrual cycle which is the second 14th day. And th at this phase, you are at the luteal phase. Luteinizing hormone is very high at this place. There is high level of progesterone and estrogen. Why is it that there is high level of progesterone? Progesterone is mostly referred to as the pregnancy hormone because at this stage, you have released an egg. So in case you had uh, sexual intercourse, and as a woman, this is the period at which pregnancy can occur. Around the 10th to the 17th day, pregnancy can occur. And this is a pregnancy hormone. In case pregnancy occurs, the, the uh, new embryo or the zygote will be maintained by the progesterone. So there will be high level of progesterone. The endometrium, because they uh, are preparing for this new egg in internal. It, uh, uh, it will become very thickened because it's shed off during the menstrual phase. It will become very thickened at this phase. It will become very secretive. The secretive gland will start secreting a lot of uh, glycogen. Glycogen, you know, and then I said, maybe uh, fertilization occur here. That is what the new fertilized egg will uh, feed on in case fertilization occur at this place. That is why there is high level of progesterone. So in case there is no fertilization. Fertilization did not occur around the 28 days. Progesterone level will fall because there is no fertilization. So its function will be no more. Then immediately progesterone level falls. The endometrium not preparing itself for no. It will become necrosis. The functional layer of the endometrium, it will become very necrosis. And it will be shed off as menses. In addition to the unfertilized oocytes, it will come out as menses. Then the cycle will continue again. Let's look at something here very critical. So if you want to study yourself, you can use this as a very good family planning method. Because if you want to study yourself, it means that in a normal 28-day cycle, on this 14th day, an egg will be released. And we should also put in our mind that the sperm, the sperm can stay as long as 72 hours. Some sperms, depending on the strength of that man or the, on the sperm of, on the strength of that sperm, the sperm can stay for as long as 24 hours, 48, or some can stay as long as 72 hours. That is why we are saying that from the 10th to the 14th day, it's very risky because in case in case you had sex around the 10th, 11th, 12th. 13 day, the stem has the ability of staying for 72 hours. So the stem can stay and wait for the oocyte at the 14th day. So it's not safe from the 10th to the 14th day. It's not safe. 
and the oocyte can also stay for as long as 72 hours. So from the 14, 15, 17, 18th day, on the 17th day, up to the 17th day, if in case you had sex on the 15th day, 16th day, sperm, it is there waiting for the oocyte, sorry, is there waiting for the sperm. So still so fertilization can occur. So it means that from the 10th to the 17th day, it's your unfree period. So if you want to conceive during this period, it is very good for you to observe this period. And you should know yourself too. And there are some symptoms for you to know that, yeah, I'm ovulating. What are the symptoms? So if you are ovulating around the 14th day, you will experience some small mild pain at the lower abdomen. And it's a very critical sign that you may be ovulating. Secondly, in the vagina secretions will also change because the naturally uh, God wants us to conceive. So during this period, it's preparing the place so that it will ease the flow of sperm or the movement of sperm through the vagina. So the secretions of the vagina will change. It will be clear, it will look like clear and white. It stretches. It stretches in between the arms and it is lining. Like kosia, kosia and yen wine, it's the wakupo kosia na wuyi yoke in the female. Raw egg white, albumin and yen wine. That is how the vagina secretion look like. That type of secretion look like. Immediately you see that secretion, slimy something in your pants or when you are urinating or something. It's a sign that you are ovulating. So if you don't want to be pregnant, you should stay away from sex or you should use backup method or you should protect yourself. And if you want to be pregnant, though, during around this period, it's very good for uh, uh, conception or fertilization to take place. So you can observe, you can observe it. Secondly, sometimes you will take post pills, contraceptives, and we will be saying a failure. Post pill now me me fire no. Anye juma, anye juma. Fine, I didn't see anye juma. Most of the post pills, and they are children who said within 72 hours. Within 72 hours. So sometimes, you do her better than her son, 72 hours. No, as soon. And as for best than her, they are 24 hours, 48 hours before she will take a post pill. Remember that, say, what obliterated that? that? What obliterated on the 14th day, that? that? And I said, who have a sex on the 15th day? What obliterated that? The whole site is already there. And other books are also saying that the sperm, when you have sex, the sperm can move as fast as within seven hours. It can reach the pool side if you have already ovulated. So what ovulated at that? Immediately, we will change for 24 hours. And by seven hours time, the sperm will meet the pool site and fertilization will take place. And if fertilization takes place and you take the medication, it won't work because the medication doesn't abort pregnancy. It just prevents pregnancy. It will only work for the 72 hours if you take it before your ovulation. That one day, there is no oocyte. And even if it's a whole time, 72 hours, no crana, it will work for you. So in your normal cycle, that is how the system works. In your normal or more than 28 day cycle. Some people say, as far as I have more than 28 day cycle, how does our system work? When you have more than 28 day cycle, Maybe let's take 30 day cycle. So two days, you know, here for be two days in the Who the two days in the first phase? You know, the, se the second phase is always constant. Ovulation always occur at the 14th day to your menses. If I try and share a hands up, ovulation, so what, 33 days, so 42 days, any days I will be a, you oblate 14 days to your menses. Into the second phase, it's always 14 days, it's strong. But so who longer a year, then other days will be, will be at the second phase. Uh -huh. It will be at the second phase. And so we will not say who free period. You should also who said, the sperm may stay for how many long? At least, you can take 72 hours. And so, we will not be free, we will days never can into 30 days. Sir. Yours will not be 10 days. If you use the 10 days, now the year. It, will, it may fail you. So you, you will add the two days. So from the 12th 
to maybe you are using 10 day cycle uh, 30 day cycle so from the 12 to maybe 16 day because 16 day to your menses no but to the 16th day when i will be ovulating after that then you add the, the three days for the outside to stay you know, to wait not when you um uh, 19 days so you, you your range will be around 12 to 19 days it will not be 10 to 17 days like the normal 28 day cycle uh -huh. that is how the system is. if you have 38 any days that you are having you know, what would you say? You oblate 14 days to your menses. Uh -huh. And sometimes when we become pregnant, we also say, Where do you do? 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 So, by chance or by the grace of God, so at the 14th day, 10 to the 17th day, it's a cause of the cause of Unprotected sex because until the 14th day, what be your man? The oocyte you know, will move from the fallopian tube into the uterus, cavity of the uterus. Uh -huh. It is a do handle when you when you and I say any of the tubes can be functional. You know, they do handle be a when you are the baby or the developed embryo, the zygote will move from here into the cavity of the uterus. So the cavity of the uterus phenomenon ne ebe implant. And this process takes around from ebe moving from the fallopian tube to the cavity it will take around 7 hours. And in uh, 7 7 days sorry it will take around 7 days. Ne ebe implant ne one so time the implantation ebe take place no say implant that say baby no e de na ho e tare mother no a uh, uh, circulation blood vessels nutrition from the mother no can enter the baby and uh, the baby can also excrete into the maternal blood vessels so when you implant here blood can be big form so that blood is as a result of the baby attaching itself into the uterine walls and this blood will also come around the 28 day cycle 28 days now you are ex you are expecting your menses at this period, you will experience this bleeding. This bleeding is called the implantational bleeding. It's a, the period around which you are experiencing your menses. The difference between this bleeding and your normal menstrual bleeding is that this is lighter. Menses is heavier than this bleeding. This bleeding is a little lighter. We are saying that the normal menstrual flow, menstrual bleeding is around 50 to 150 mils. But this bleeding is lighter than the uh, 50 to 150 mils. Sometimes it's just a day or two. So if you know yourself, you can differentiate it from your normal menstrual flow. It's implantational bleeding. And some ladies, oh, this bleeding, the public says, oh, when you're in the menstrual, so she, she is free. And it's not like that. Even if, say, when with this bleeding, but it's not a normal menstrual. It's implantational bleeding. Pregnancy has occurred. So at this period, we are UPT. And I said, we'll check your pregnancy. And I said, we'll talk test strips and testing with fear. The uh, pregnancy test will be positive. It means that you are two weeks pregnant. Months are open. It means that you are two weeks pregnant. I am going to say, we are four weeks pregnant. Most of the time, it's only a day today because most of the ladies take the one month. And they say, hey, one month, that will be. And you're two weeks because you only said two weeks to your menses and now who took us you or you ovulated so two weeks to your menstruation the, the uh, zygote or the oocyte is just two weeks pregnant you are just two weeks pregnant so at this period like i said you're two weeks pregnant it's here the class university has said next time we will talk about abnormalities of the menstrual cycle and some of medical conditions associated to it thank you your name, your uh, name. I'm Evelyn Essel, or Sister Essel. Uh, you'll be expecting more on this channel. Your bad mom information is needed to Thank you. And your, and your rank? Your kid? Uh, okay, I'm a staff midwife. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you.